Mm. We're part of the Joe Rogan podcast now. The Joe time Rogan get... pod. The Joe Rogan podcast. It's time to get extremely distracted and talk only about drug taking and uh, viral videos of large animals attacking people. Of course. I love the Joe Rogan podcast. That might be my favorite podcast. Can we stop plugging other people's podcasts on our podcast? Hey, you know what? The Super Best Friend cast? Oh, wait, they don't exist anymore. Cast the Super Beast podcast. Hey, everybody go check them out. They're a good podcast. Talk do you about remember, the video games. Do you remember Pod Taku? No. I do. It was abs- It was amazing. Then they just stopped doing it. I'm like, oh, my feels. Oh. Let me just find an image for a later piece in our fucking podcast, but how about you introduce us, Coon Air? Woo! Uh, welcome to... Ooh. What um, the fuck? Good guys with pennies. I like it. Pennies. Is it, is it obvious I ran out of ideas? Uh, you could have gone with Ging Gang Gooly 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 Watcher. Yeah. Uh, ping Pang Poo. Ping Pang Poo. And that's good enough. That'll be next time. That'll be next time. That'll, that'll be next time. Make sure to say it. Therefore, we can milk a joke twice. That's exactly. economical. Yeah, that's, that's, that's basic economics, man. Gotta milk the joke. Okie dokie. Uh, let's start off with you, my dude. How's your week? My week? Um, oh, I got a subscription. Thank you, Jared. How are you doing? Um, I broke number one rule, didn't I? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Nah, it's more like number four rule. It's like we don't even have rules anymore. I would say number one rule on stream is to not say the N-word. Nichols? There you go. Ah, nigger. Um, no, well, we're doing uh, doing pretty good. Um, you require ten hundred thousand positive vibes, nah, man. You're getting a big no on that one. Um, so yeah, my should we? For those what? who don't know, the positive vibe system is a system where it's basically fun box. Yeah, it's, a, a, it's like itchy and scratchy box. Channel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plug your channel real quick before we move on. <laughs> Buy my merch. Ah. Uh. I don't even know. Oh, this is Sonic. As if that's fucking Sonic. Piss off. Um. Yeah. So my week. What have I done this week? What have I done this week? Stuff I would assume. I played um. Far Cry Four. Uh, friends. Really enjoyed it. So mm. I bought Far Cry Five. Um. Can't run it. Yep. No, the game's running. Not fine, just running. It's running. Um, But I get mouse lag. Mm. Like, no other lag, just mouse lag. Like, I can run forward, no stutter. But as soon as I move my mouse, it's dirt, 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 dirt. Um, I played a game of Command and Conquer. Mm-hmm. Um, I won, but um, the AI beat me so much into submission that I wanted to cry. So, did hmm. I really win? That is the question. Well, war has no winners, does it? War never changes. Yeah. Except for Except when for war... Except for the cool new weapons that war makes all the time. That was pretty cool. Except for when war changes in Metal Gear. But war, war, war never changes. Changed. War never changes. It's two different universes. You can't compare them. But it came out at the same time on the same console. No. Everybody knows that in the Fallout universe, and this is canon, uh, cavemen had mini nukes and were shooting each other with them at the very beginning of time. Of course. Um, I would like a GTX 970. Um, I'll, I'll take that as a direct donation straight into my PayPal, please. Um, yeah. I don't know what else I've done this week. Oh yeah, I played Smash Bros at um, Aikido. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Did you smash? Uh, no, that was when we went to the strip club afterwards. 
Oh, oh no, sorry, in the game of Smash. Sorry. Sorry. You can't smash in a strip club, you'll get thrown out. <laughs> You're right. That joke fell flat. <laughs> brothel. Brothel, then. Ah, now you just look like a skis. I mean, I, I guess mean, you would with the strip club analogy. I mean... Is it an analogy? Joke. How was your week, anyways? Uh, well, I, I played some video games. Uh, as per the huge, but with every single example I'm going to give, I really me mean that I played it for like two seconds or something. Because I just wanted to see if it worked. What's the gameplay like? I didn't actually get into, into the game very far. Because oh, yeah. I've been super fucking busy. Yeah. But uh, I'm really stalling for time as my Steam loads up so I can see. But one of the things I was playing was Aurora 4X, yeah? Uh, Aurora uh, Borealis. We this one I did week. actually play for a little bit. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, I talk about it all the time, so... Uh, yeah, I got it, it... the private economy working. People are hauling all my shit around, setting up civilian mining colonies. I'm like, bruh, that's my shit. But whatever, they can do whatever. Um, okay, Steam games. So I decided to finally uh, pop in all the shit from my Humble Bundle onto my Steam. Or at least everything I was interested in. So, uh, North Guard is I'll, I'll just a... I'll just about to say North Korea. Carry on. No, no. North Guard is a Viking-like game where you play as some Vikings. You pick your, your, your clan of Vikings. And this is kind of like a, a MOBA kind of thing. Yeah. I didn't expect that. I thought it'd be turn-based strategy for some reason. I don't know how I got that idea in my head. Uh, probably the graphics. But uh, you, sell up, you set up colonies, you fight wolves, then you fight Draga, and there's multiple ways to win. You could kill every other tribe, or you can find Yggdrasil, or you can do all sorts. And you can set up boats to... Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like an RTS, kind of MOBA, kind of... I say MOBA because it's a battle arena. It's very... It's very focused on non-traditional RTS methods of winning. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's closer to an RTS than, let's say, Dota. So I don't know why I say MOBA. It's kind of a weird game. Definitely worth a look at, though. I mean, you've already confused uh, the fuck out of me, so... Well, okay, you start off with, like... Four little villagers, yeah? And they just... They automatically go and they hunt for food, yeah? Yeah. Uh, sorry, they're gatherers, not hunters, yeah? Yeah, so I'm, go I'm get getting food. a bit of a... God game sort of thing here. But while they're automatically doing that, you can control them. So you can set them to build stuff, yeah? Build buildings. So it's really rts -y right now. Yeah. they do stuff on the automatic based on their job and where they are, which colonized reason, region they are in, yeah? You can colonize a reason, region at the cost of food, but it goes up exponentially. And when you do that, you have obviously more space for your buildings because you could only build a finite amount of buildings. I think like five in your starting area, three in any colonized region, yeah? Yeah. So you have different resources you need to manage, wood, gold, happiness um as the game goes on the expected happiness of the tribe goes up and so your happiness total goes down and so you need to get skulls to make them sing songs and stuff so that your tribe is happy and when you generate happiness the more happiness you have the more tribesmen you make if you're at a negative then you get penalties if you're at zero then you don't get any okay yeah and those tribesmen can be turned into little uh, warriors and stuff. If you build a warrior training center, at the cost of gold, you turn them into a warrior instantly, and then they'll go and fight whatever you want to fight. Or you can leave them in a colonized area, and they'll automatically fight whatever comes into it. And so, um, a lot of the same strategies that you'd find in a MOBA, or in a game like StarCraft, uh, come into play. Like, for example one of your little villagers are being attacked, I instantly knew, yep. Okay, set two guys on the guy attacking it, 
then once one of the villagers get low health, pull them away so that the aggro goes on the villager attacking and then bring them back and now you've got double the power for double the health instead of them being picked off one by one and then your health, your power goes down. So that was fun. Uh, Northgard, interesting. I, I might uninstall it because it's not the game I thought it was. I mean, you I thought decided... it would be a turn-based strategy. You have, no, it was you, you have spent five minutes fun. reviewing it, it so... It, it was fun, but it didn't hold my attention for 10 minutes or so, or 20 or so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I played some more Skyrim. Just a little bit. Just I little bit. fully turned that game into Dark Souls now. It is Dark Souls. Uh, I got the rolling, lock on. Uh, oh, I could not get the lock on to work. I've got the rolling, but I couldn't get a lock on to work. Okay. Fucking it took me, me a while to figure it out, but the lock on, yeah? Yeah. It's two separate mods. All right. So you install one mod, yeah, and then it just works, but it's got the fucking glowy circle. Did yeah. you get that part to work? Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, though, after a while, it would stop locking on. Oh. No, that's not normal. Maybe you need to get the newer version, because he's released two under two different names. And then one of them's got an optional mod in the in the download page where you could get different reticles like the Bloodborne reticle or a less garish one as well. Yeah, I, I just have the one where they, they glow. Like, I have it so they just glow when they're highlighted. Oh, no, that's the old, old, old one. So that's gone now. Fuck. Like, I know um, you get a diff like three different reticles on the one I got and then um, I switched it so they glowed. Like I just turned mm. the reticle to like zero opacity and just made it so the glow. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Anywho, been having fun with that. Uh, Baldur's Gate. I played a little bit of Baldur's Gate. Just oh, yeah. a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. By tiny, tiny, tiny bit, I loaded up, made a character, and was like, oh shit, I shouldn't be playing video games, and I turned it off. So, don't know why I even mentioned it. Uh... Crusader Kings 2, I did the exact same thing because I wanted to do incest, but then I realized they don't have all the DLC to make incest fun. Um, wow. I didn't get the DLC. Wow. It's, well, I saw this guy on YouTube, yeah, making a incest-only challenge, and he wanted to reform his religion so that incest would be the norm, and he did it in the end. But I can't do that the DLC that I got. So, uh, maybe I'll do other stuff in the future, but nah. Not right now. I, I don't even like Crusader Kings that much. I prefer um, um, Europa. So, that's where I've been at. See, all I, all I can remember is the time that you came onto Xbox at one time and went, don't watch Game of Thrones, it's nothing but incest and dragons. I might have been joking. It was early seasons. Okay. I, I liked mean, it. we were still playing the Xbox beginning. then. I liked it from the very beginning, so I don't know why I'd say that. I have no idea. I just remember you coming onto Xbox and saying that, and then you went straight off to watch more. Oh. Yes, I was joking then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, you Devil really May Cry 4. So... I made an impulse buy. Never Bloody that Palace for Devil May, Cry, Devil May Cry 5 came out with an update this uh, very recently. And the update was Bloody Palace. What's Bloody Palace? Well, if you're a fan of Devil May Cry, you know what Bloody Palace is. It, the, um, the mode in 4, where you fight through different rooms of enemies, where you have a timer taken down and you get more time, and you do it perfectly. Uh, in fact, I think you get more time anyway, but you get a lot more time if you do it perfectly. And you're trying to not die, for one, but also trying to... Um... Sorry, had a brain fart there for a second. You're also trying to make sure the timer doesn't run out. And yeah. as you continue going up the le levels, um, not only are you fighting different challenge rooms, you also fight the bosses all over again. So it's half a boss rush half a challenge room type thing. 
And they released it for Dev May Cry 5, but I don't own Dev May Cry 5. And I had unlocked it before, back in the days when I played Xbox. Hmm. But I really wanted to play it again, and I hadn't unlocked it for the PC. So I kind of spent a pound to unlock loads for the Capcom got me. They got, they got me. They got my wallet. Should we move on to uh, your topic? Hell yeah. Should we not do this first? But topic? I can do topic. Yeah. So, the other thing I've been doing with my week, which is coincidentally my topic, is... Hey, get into game design. Game design? It hurts. Game development. Get into game development. It's some cool shit. Uh, hold up. Maybe you should learn how to code first. So, if you want to get into game development, I do not recommend you doing something like um, a game maker, yeah? Hmm. Because their own programming language that you will have to learn to make any decent games in it. I mean, the the drag and drop kind of thing, the scratch kind of thing, is eh, it's it, it's functional, but it's not great. So, instead of using Game Maker, I would recommend using Unity, and this is where I'm going to show Unity on the podcast. Uh, eh. I've been tinkering around with Unity, and I've been tinkering around with Blender, and I've been actually trying to make a new game again uh, in the little down times when I do have. Um, it's great. Please do it. Learn C Sharp, Python, or C++ if you want to get into game design. If you get into C++ or Python, you're going to have to build your own game engine. Not as difficult as you'd think. I recommend a... Uh, sorry, loud things came up on my computer. I recommend a guy called the Cherno Project, who teaches you C++ and is currently doing us a, um, a whole series on how to make a game engine from scratch in C++. Uh, I'm not sure what he's using. I think it's OpenGL. Um, definitely take a look at that. But if you can't be asked to make a game engine, what's available to you? Uh, well, Unreal. you can use Unreal, yeah. You can use Unity. Um, but another option that you could use, which is actually... A transferable skill so it's 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 you'll learn python and at the same time you'll not have too much trouble making a game engine i would recommend learning how to use pygame and while pygame can be a little frustrating and slow at times you can actually make nice good games i'm going to learn which games were actually made in pygame um nice good games from scratch uh, with a lot of tutorials that are out there. Um, I am trying to look for examples of commercial Pygame game games, but I don't think any exist because it's slow as fuck. It, it does chug a bit if you're not using, what's the word, uh, multi-threading, but you don't have to concern yourself with that. Basic GG. games that you'd be able to pr- produce is enough. Um, yeah, that's my topic. Learn how to code is basically what that boils down into. Um, definitely learn how to game design and also just plan out everything, really. Uh, it's no use making a bunch of models or sprites or something and then just smushing them together. It doesn't work in the end. You'll just end up wasting a lot of time. Most likely also do creep as well. So... There you go. That's my uh, that's my topic. Ooh, that's some. I mean, I'm looking to go into Unity anyway. Um, doing a bit of Unity work because I've got then, into uh, trying. Well, I'm more less coding and more modeling and you Unreal sort of shit. Like hmm. currently doing making a building in Unreal Engine. Don't know why it makes more sense to, you know. To make the models in Blender and then import them into Unity, but they want to do want us to do it this way, um, just so we can teach us Unity. Eh. Right. I mean, we have done Blender as well, but that was a different thing. Like that was Blender in filmmaking, so. Mm. But Blender, nonetheless. 
Um, so I'm happy to learn that anyway, and I want to get into it a bit more. Hmm. Definitely do. Uh, take a few courses online in uh, C Sharp first, or JavaScript. I mean, I'm probably just uh, going to stick to the modeling side because I sim severely hate coding. Well, it's easy. <laughs> for, for you it is, not for me. I will it's, sit there and actually have breakdowns, it'll be great. It's easy peasy, but... Uh, hey, no, glad you're trying to get into UT. I think everybody should touch UT at least a little bit. I mean, so I, th I think a lot of people. A lot of fun. I think a lot of people have uh, touched Unity in the sense that uh, they've touched Fortnite. No, that that analogy doesn't. That's on Unity, isn't it? Fortnite. Yeah. No, that's uh, unreal. Fuck me, wrong one. It's unreal, yeah. Yeah, they've got very similar names. Leave me alone. Bleh. Anyways, uh, let's move on to. Is there any games coming out? Like, are there any games of note coming out? Of note? Hell no. Do you know any? No. Why is nothing fucking coming out these days? Are they waiting for Christmas? Um, well, it's as Yahtzee says, it's a long uh, drought of video games. After, tell you just what. after Christmas. Let's talk about more than video games, okay? Hey, do you like Enter the Gungeon? The what? Enter the Gungeon. The what? Enter the Gungeon. Never heard of it. It's a roguelike twin-stick shooter where you get randomly generated guns. Okay. And you, sh you you go through a dungeon. Enter the Gungeon. Um, recently got an update. Everybody's happy about that. That sounds cool. Uh, so if you're into that, maybe check it out again. It's also 50% off. So take a look at that. Uh, what else? Borderlands 3. Oh, that, yeah, that is a game that's coming out, isn't it? Yeah. That came out of... Right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about Borderlands. I want to talk about that. Uh-huh. So, Borderlands 3 gets announced out of fucking nowhere. Did you hear uh -huh. anything about Borderlands before it was announced? Uh, I think it's to cover up the whole Randy Pitchford thing. I mean, it's... a can't talk about. This was way too late like everyone had already forgotten about that i think the feds haven't <laughs> yeah i mean i don't think the feds are gonna drop brandy pitchford just so they could turn around and play a bit of borderlands 3 you'd be surprised <laughs> uh... no no hey, hey hey don't arrest him yet wait for that borderlands 3 <laughs> so honest thoughts on it I haven't seen a lick of nothing on it other than the fact that it'll only be on um, the Epic Store, which people are angry about. I don't really care much for Borderlands. I don't think the humor's that great. I think Telltale did the humor even better, which is a sad thing to say about, you know, flagship game. Not flagship. Well, yeah, flagship game. What what else does Epic Games do? Uh, is it, it's not even Epic Games, sorry. It's, um, no, it's uh, Gearbox. Gearbox. What else does Gearbox do? Um, destroy people's um, childhood and favourite movies. Ah, oh, such as the Duke Nukem. And the um, Aliens. So, I'm not going to just say flagship, because that implies there's a fleet. It's their game, okay? So... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I forgot the original point I was going to make. Did you see where I was going? Or? No, no. I saw you walk oh, into a yeah, door verbally, yeah. but I didn't see where you were going. No, 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 no. No, I remember the point I was going to make. That's their main game, yeah? Yeah. That's the game that everybody loved, yeah? And yet, their comedy is better in a spin-off, not made by them. I think that's a bit telling. Yeah. I think they're a bit... I'm not talking about the people grinding, working on the day-to-day. -day. I think the main writers in particular, and a little bit of the character designers, pretty shit. And kind of don't care about Borderlands 3. Well, well, right, watch the video and let me know what you think of it. Because that's... 
Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm interested in. Which video? The one on the memory the, stick. The, the the trailer of the fucking Borderlands game, you twat. <laughs> I will not stop referencing it. I know you won't. It is actually quite <laughs> funny though. <laughs> um. So yes. Um. That game actually looks really good. It looks surprisingly good. Um, I didn't think they were going to do this. I thought Borderlands 2 was the peak. Mm. I mean, okay. Borderlands 1 was like the sort of steep hill in quality. It went from nothing to fucking mass quality. And then like from 1 to 2 was just that, that gentle incline. Like it was a bit better, but it wasn't massively better. Right? Are you talking about from beginning to end of game? Uh, I'm just saying, like, Borderlands 2 compared to Borderlands 1 was technically better, but, like, would you say it's better? Eh, it's a different story. Like, anyway, regardless of that, Borderlands 3 looks fuck tons better than Borderlands 1 and 2. And I genuinely was looking at this with genuine disdain, because I genuinely want Gearbox to just implode now. I'm sick of them. Why are you excited for Borderlands 3 but don't like Gearbox? Right. I'm excited. For, well, I'm not excited. I'm just... Borderlands 3 looks good. And if it is good, then that's a good thing. But Gearbox, I genuinely want them to just... I think their time's over. Like, they're... They've been making some bad business moves. Randy Pitchford's just a piece of shit and I want him to be out of the job. Um, mm -hmm. And in prison. Um, they've ruined Duke Nukem Forever as well as delaying it forever. They've ruined Alien Colonial Marine. I don't think they've got anything else to add to the world besides more Borderlands. And I genuinely didn't think they could add more Borderlands to the world when they fucked up the pre-sequel. And then started outsourcing Borderlands to Telltale. I'm glad it looks good, because it's a good franchise I like. Gearbox, though, I, I genuinely think they should be closing their doors soon. Okay. Uh, well, I think there might be much more to come. Because yeah. it... <sighs> At least the villains look kind of cool to me. Oh, uh, Gearbox did uh, some expansions for... What's that game called? Uh, Half-Life. All right. Yeah, they did um, both of them, I believe. Yeah, they used to do expansions and PC ports back in the day. Huh. Yeah, it's really random. Are those expansions good for? Yeah, yeah they're genuinely seen as canon. Okay. The um, one where you play as a security officer and one. Yeah, uh, one like one. You're the uh, task team that's sent into. Yeah, there's, yeah, Blue Shift, I think that was. Mm. Then there was Opposing Force, where you played as the military people. Mm. And I played neither. Yeah, neither have I. I've never finished Half-Life. It's have a long-ass game. It is a fucking long-ass game. Um, I've, I finished Half-Life 2. I, I haven't finished that either. I want to, oh. I just haven't got to it yet. It's a good trip. So, Not as long as game. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, news? Yep, let's go to the news. So we're going to come off talking about Randy Pitchford and go straight back into talking about Randy Pitchford. <laughs> so PC gamers uh, don't like Epic Games. Yeah, stores. Oh my god. Borderlands 3 is exclusive on the Epic Games Store, yeah? And PC gamers are not liking that. It's only I don't know a why I had that time twister. That yes, is... it's a timed exclusive for six yeah. months, but people still don't like that, and there's yeah. some good reasons for it. So uh, I've called this uh, news story: PC gamers don't like Epic Games Store exclusivity for for Borderlands Three, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the botnet. So let's talk. You just wanted um, to cram that reference in, didn't you? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Uh, last I week. Didn't see it. It, he's the, you know the reference where he's on the nuke and he's flying down and he goes, Yahoo! Oh, yeah. And he's waving around his hat. Yeah. Yeah, it's from that. 
it's a funny film. I know the film. The first time I watched it, I didn't know it was a comedy. I was watching it like, damn, these people are dark. Now I watch it knowing it's a comedy, I'm like, this is the darkest comedy ever. It's, gonna... it's hilarious, actually. Isn't there a bit where he stands up and goes, mein Führer, I can walk in front of a load of yeah. American officers? Yeah, that that was just like, whoa, that's poignant. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, so... that's, that's supposed it is supposed to mean something. It was made by Kubrick. Ah, yeah, he made that... Um... Shining, shining. Um, movie that no one liked, mainly the mm. writer. We're a video games podcast, by the way. Yeah, so, w- welcome to video <sighs> games, where we talk about video games sometimes. Uh, last week, uh, Gearbox and 2K announced that Borderlands will be coming to the Epic Games Store PC platform. It's a timed exclusive for six months, and I think Randy himself even explained it on Twitter. Trying to shift the blame over to 2K as the publisher well, for the decision. He did say, um, even though he was a sassy piece of shit about this, uh, Randy, I, I won't get too big at you know for your boots. The police are still knocking at your door. Um, <laughs> they come, uh, I, fucking not to talk about another podcast again, but at PAX, um, uh, a podcaster that I listen to, name's Woolly, is on the Castle Super Peace podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he went to PAX. He saw Randy Pitchford. He's actually gone crazy. Um, he can't stop doing, like, magic tricks for people. And he reckons it's because, like, the pe- the pressure is mounting from recent investigations. Yeah. What? So, he, has, he I love how he's sticking to the lie and now he's to- just took up fucking magic. <laughs> he does magic. He can't stop talking about magic. Like, Anyway, back to the story. And he keeps ordering himself cheese pizza. Hmm. Like, hey, no, no, no joke, I genuinely want pizza now. I might order some. Oh, order me some, please. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, um, what was it he said? Do you mind if I take the reins on this one? Sure, go on. Um, he might as right, like, he, this was so sassy, he, he was just, he could have put the fucking clapping emoji between every line. It would have been that level of sass. Like, what part of T- but Take Two Interactive has exclusive publishing rights to? Basically, saying that, and mm. I don't think he was pushing the blame because he is completely right. The Take Two would have made that call and not um, them. Yeah, with them being publishers and um, you know the uh, shadow proclamation and all that. Mm. Pulling the veil over your eyes, sir. Uh, I'll let you take carry on with your story. <laughs> okay. So, um, so uh, as one Twitter user pointed out, um, the reason why people are angry at it being on the Epic Game Store and that everybody else is going to have to wait for six months is because myriad of consumer unfriendly features that the Epic Store has, as opposed to Steam. Hmm. For example, I should have saved the list, but I don't have the list, but for example, it's stuff like gifting games to friends, using third-party keys, um, uh, sharing your account with a friend. Not having a fucking Family card. Member. They, they don't have a shopping card. Are you card serious? Feature. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, achievements, no achievements. No achievements, no. no. Odd support, no. Like, you know when you, like, just look at any Steam game that has, like, all these features listed down the side? And yeah. that's what that doesn't have. Like, no trading cards, no in a, uh, yeah, basically, it's still, it's still new. It's still new. Mm. But, allow me to play devil's advocate here. Yeah. Why is everyone complaining so much? Like, I get that well, there are valid reasons to complain, but not well, this level if, of complaining. If you'll if you'll let me cut you off. Here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's because of a final reason. Yeah. And this may make you uninstall the Epic Games launcher, like now. 
Uh, oh. The Epic Games Launcher is a botnet that scans all your files and information to. Oh, you're, to, you're uh, lagging, man. You're lagging. Ah, uh, okay. Yep, yeah, they're trying to take me down from spitting the truth. The Epic's Game Launcher is a botnet. It scans all your files and certificates on your computers and then sends it over to their servers. How how much um, information has come out about that out of curiosity? Like, is there anywhere? It's proven. Any hard yeah. It's proven. Oh, yeah. You can, you, you can test it for yourself. Yeah. There's a piece of software called Process Monitor. It shows every single process uh, that is executed by an executable. Oh, okay. Or, or a piece of software or whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, no, it scans every single certificate. On the it scans all of your files and it sends the information back. And um, they did. It even um, yeah. dangerously. Scans your reg your reg keys, so all the different things in your registry. Scans yeah. those, and you know what can happen if one of those gets corrupted. Oh yeah. Once, once um, I don't know if that was with you. Uh, no, it was with a friend of mine called Josh, and we were playing a Warhammer Forty K game, which fucked up my registries, and I was not able to get into that. But I could download the registries again and then copy and paste them Hold I've had that like you um the internet goes down and the only way you can fix it is if you install the like reinstall the net driver but you can't do that because you don't have the fucking internet to download it yeah you gotta put it on your phone and then drag it it's it's dumb it's so dumb yeah, it's so dumb like it was only when I reinstalled windows on my laptop like mm. a, a cracked version of Windows 7 because this is dumb, okay? I upgraded to Windows 10 from 7, but it wouldn't let me de downgrade. Fuck. Yeah, and Windows 10 was not functional on my laptop. But yeah. They don't care. They just they just want you to upgrade. They don't care what happened. Fuck. So, yeah, that was fun. That was fun times indeed. Oh, and then, then they said, basically told me if I wanted to go back to 7, I'd need to rebuy Windows. Um, in any case, uh, the common counter-argument with scanning, which, by the way, it's bad enough. Uh, you'd agree with me that it's bad. Oh, yeah, definitely. But the common counter-argument is it's only checking to see that you hack those or any kind of uh, software that would uh, hack or mod any games on the Epic platform. Mm. Um, the most immediate concern being for um, is Fortnite on Epic Games? Yep, Fortnite's um, ep Epic because it's, uh, what's yeah. it called, isn't it? Unreal. Yes. Um, that's the most immediate concern. However, it seems to be scanning files almost indiscriminately. Yeah. Uh, one guy found that it um, found that it was scanning the registry to the Internet Explorer set settings, browser settings. As you do. It also goes through every single path and name of every process on your so yeah I literally think Google you're safe so I, I just literally googled epic games is a botnet and um, the you know like you get a little bit of text underneath the link before you click it mm. I shit you not it reads oh boy what a mess epic games store is Tell me, has anyone actually read the terms of service? No, well, um, we still have a problem. Yeah. What? Oh, and there's just a fuck ton of images. Oh, yeah, it just goes down and down. <laughs> I'm sending that to you. Please oh, do. Yeah. 
But, um, there, like, I, could I just make a sort of, I want to make a point, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Let me just find uh, Discord. There it is. Uh, where are you? There you are. I just want to make a quick point. Like, ignoring the botnet stuff, um, this is just an argument for the common consumer. Mm -hmm. Why are people so up in arms about Epic Games? Like, I get that it's still in the early days as a launcher, and it's still got improvements to be made. And their egregious and vicious buying of exclusivity is anti-competitive. Although not fully, because they do have a timed exclusivity. My problem is, is why is the people getting complaining about it? Because Valve has been fucking us for years. But with, with not a, this way. With a literal laissez-faire approach to their whole service. Like, their green light system is the best example of this. Their green light system is the best example of saying they just don't care. They do not look at it and they do not care. I, I actually like laissez -faire. I actually like that. It's when that uh, I I like the idea of swing your arm unless it hits you. Like put whatever shit you want to on Steam. It's kind of weird that people would be more up in arm with the fact that shitty games are on Steam than the fact that pop potentially good games are being put on a system that completely tracks you and completely violates your right to privacy. I mean, my argument is like, like this argument completely ignores that because I'm thinking purely from the common consumer point of view. Like, mm. little Timmy who plays fucking Fortnite is not going to know what a botnet is. Like, he should. <laughs> he's, he's probably fucking little Timmy has parents who can uninstall Fortnite for him. Little Timmy probably doesn't want that to happen. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not Tim, my Fortnite. Got, I've got little my Timmy, you gotta go to bed, okay? Little Timmy's gonna get beaten. Don't fucking. Uh, little Timmy's gonna end up on Randy Pitchford's memory uh, stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Uh, oh, dear. But, um. It's a compass. It's basically, they are. I get why they're doing. They said they're going to do a lip, do this um, aggressive exclusivity thing for a little longer, just so they can get a foot in. And they are upgrading their system as it goes along, which is good. Would actually get a proper competitor. But my biggest argument is, people are more annoyed with the fact that Epic and Steam are a thing, and that they have to split their library, than you know having to buy a Switch for Zelda to buy a PS4 for Spider-Man, to buy an Xbox for Halo. People are more annoyed with having Epic Games and Steam on their computer. The difference being that, okay, Spider-Man, that makes sense. Yeah. But, but, it's like, it's like the fact that you'd never see, um, what's it called? Valve's premier game. Hmm. You will never see that on the Epic Store. Definitely What's not. it called? Uh, Half-Life. Half-Life. You'll never see it on the Epic Store. Yeah. You may see it on a place where there would be no competition for their kind. I.e. like, they released it on Dreamcast and they released later ones on Xbox and they released other Valve games on it. Yeah. But you'll never see it on the Epic Store and you've got to ask why that is. Because it's competition. They don't want any competition. Yeah. So I, it's not the act of putting it on a different store that's so bad, I think. It's the fact that it's being put on a different store that's so user-unfriendly. Uh, and uh, what's it called? Uh, Consumer-unfriendly. Yeah. Huh? I don't think it's so consumer-unfriendly to put shit on your system. I think it's pretty consumer unfriendly to, for example, so 
Hello? Or not allow sharing of accounts. Hello? Yeah, yeah you cut out for a second. I was like, where, where you go? Oh. But no, no, you, you, you're fine. Yeah. Um, either or, I think this is an argument that can go round and round for a while. So, uh, should we, oh. do we have any more news topics? Hell yeah, we do. Oh, my. Let's rev up the whole news cycle. Oh, uh, there is one little addendum to the news, actually. Yeah? Uh, so this whole controversy, not just that it made people say that they're not going to buy the game, it's made a bunch of people say, I'm going to pirate the game. So maybe they didn't make the best decision. Hey, they, you do you. You know, if you're going to pirate it, pirate it. Can't I'd, stop them. Literally I'd... can't. Did you hear they made a crack? A what? They made a crack for Denuvo. Denuvo? Oh, that's the... That's the, uh, fucks up your hard drive constantly encrypts, uh, unbla unbreakable DRM that was supposed to, to, to oh, yeah. fix piracy forever. Yeah, that's dumb. And then, and then uh, a lot the of people on 4chan were like, take that, pirates. Ha! You'll never get in. And all the other people on 4chan were like, time. And we gave it time. And now there's been a crack for Denuvo. I mean, it's going to happen anyway. Hmm. EA has laid off 350 people so that they can refocus on quality of games. Ah, uh, now let me guess where that uh, laying off started. That start at the very tippity top, the people that don't craft the games. No, no, this happened way, 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 way you down at the bottom. You would be surprised. So EA Fucking has hell. hired 350 people from their marketing, publishing, and analytics departments of the company, not development, which is great. Uh, it's, well, I mean, no, it's not great. They lost their jobs. I mean, the developers always get the worst of these firings when they do happen. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good to hear that developers aren't the one on the shooting line for once. Yeah. Um, so, making a statement to Kotaku, they said this. So, today we took some important steps as a company to address our challenges in, and prepare for the opportunities ahead. As we look across the changing world around us, it's clear that we must change with it. We're making deliberate moves to better deliver on our commitment refine our organization and needs of our players. As part of this, we have made changes to our marketing and publishing organization, our operations teams, and we're ramping down our current presence in Japan and Russia as we focus on different ways to serve our players in those markets. In addition to organizational changes, we are deeply focused on increasing the quality in our games and services. Great games will continue to be the core of everything we do. We are thinking differently about how to amaze and inspire our players. It's a difficult day. The changes we're making today will impact about 350 9,000 person company. These are important but very hard decisions. We do not take them lightly. We are friends and colleagues at e We are friends and colleagues at EA. We appreciate and value everyone's contributions. We're doing everything we can to ensure we are looking after our people to help them through this period to find their next opportunity. This is our top priority. So, are they being sincere? Or are they just firing people? That is a fucking surprising remark, regardless of whether or not they're being sincere or not. Like, mm. this is what, this has come out of nowhere? They're, they're actually having a re You sit there and go, has Tim Man it's, really got a heart? I mean, if you're looking from a close perspective, yes, it's come out of nowhere. But if you're looking from the perspective of the last long time, I remember hearing the shit the EA was doing back when I was in college. Yeah. Can't EA's all been a sh that. Huh? We all remember that, don't we? <laughs> yeah. So, it's been a long time coming that they think, hold up, we can't just live off of FIFA and 2 like, eventually people are just going to get bored of that game. Yeah. You're actually going to make quality games again. Hmm. 
Did EA make Rayman? No, that's Ubisoft. Uh, Rayman was Ubisoft. Ubisoft. What did EA make that was quality in the past? It was only the sports games, wasn't it? I mean, they had loads of games back in the day. Was it? Um... Ah! Nope, even from a close perspective, I didn't put two and two together. EA what? made Anthem. Oh yeah, Anthem, yeah. This and is Apex. a response to Anthem. Yeah, yeah. Um, then there was, what else was it? Like, go you know on. Um, They've okay. got a huge reputi reputation. Oh, they made The Sims as well. Oh They've yeah, The Sims, yeah. And Need for Speed. Oh, yeah. And Medal of Honor, Terrible. and Battlefield. Yeah. And Command and Conquer. Hmm. Yeah, they've done a load. A lot of it's trash. Wow, yeah. that was just out of nowhere. You just go, a lot of it's trash. Let's move on. No, it's not let's move on. I think they've come to a percentage of good games versus trash games and been like, whoops. You know? Like, like maybe it, it was the wake anthem was the wake up they needed. Yeah, because they had planned for that game to go on for long, and now they can't do that because nope. no one's playing it. Do I um? Do you want to just go through? Sorry, I, I'm just looking through this. Do you want to go through um just a handful of games that EA ha has the rights to? Sure. Um. So they've got Battlefield, Bejeweled, Burnout, Command and Conquer, Crisis, Dead Space, um, Dragon Age. Oh, damn, Crisis as well. Yeah. Harry Potter Dragon games. Dragon Age. Yeah. They they have Ar Harry Potter games. Yeah. NFL, Mass Effect, Medal of Honor, Mirror's Edge, NBA, Need for Speed, NFL, NHL. Populous games, Road Rash. Fuck, I remember Road Rash. That's brilliant. Sim City, Sims and Sport, SSX, System Shock, Titanfall, uh, Wing Commander. Then there's uh, American McGee's Alice series, Army of Two. What else do they have? Some cricket games, Dead Space series. They still have that, yeah. Peggle. They have Peggle. Yeah. Uh, what else they got? I mean, where's a good start? If you were armchair CEO, yeah? Yep. You're CEO of EA. Skate games as well. That's where you'd start. Oh, what? No, I was just saying skate games. They have the skate oh, games. Right. Okay, oh, on. okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're sat down, you're like, all hail Mr. Konar. Yeah. All hail. You're the new leader of EA, undisputed. What yeah. do you do? Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll get a thick German accent and a little moustache. Okay, I'm serious. Where would you start in fixing EA? In fixing EA? Okay, let me just turn the music Yeah, game-wise, game-wise. Game-wise, right. So, I think maybe... Right, well, we'll get rid of microtransactions. Or at least we're going to make... At the very very least, we're going to make them... as least imposing as possible. Like, mm. we're talking only cosmetic if we're going down that route at all. Mm. Um, more emphasis on expansions and DLC. Um, definitely better manatorial. Better mm -hmm. quality of life for developers. Like, we're talking like a better person, a happy person can make a better game, not crunch times. Yeah. Like, did you hear about the crunch time for Anthem? Uh, yes, I did. I should have made that a story. But yeah. they um, they basically had a year to develop the whole game, didn't they? Because uh, different uh, higher-ups in the company. They... Like, the pro project meetings would be like, higher-ups would argue about how the game is supposed to be made, what's in yeah. the game, and then no decision will be made by the time that it's over. Like... And so developers would just build nothing. They, they had a... Or... They've had an idea for what was to become Anthem six years before um, the release. Yeah. 
but they, as you say, they, they weren't given much to work with. They got told, right, we want multiplayer and we want microtransactions. And make it go. And that's it. That's all they had. And it was... It's surprising they, they made as much as they did. Yeah. It's... Sad as well. But, um... What was it? There were... A second let me try and i think they were right so developers at um anthem working on anthem bioware they were given what were called stress relief uh stress relief period i think that's what it was called mm -hmm. now this is usually only given to, like ptsd where back when that first came about that was usually something only given to soldiers like obviously, you know, other things come in and can give you PTSD. I understand that, but um, like to be to give your employees stress relief, something given to soldiers that endure PTSD is quite serious. Like a lot of mm. developers stated that they would go into a room, lock the door, and cry for a bit before going back to work. Some of them took three months mandated stress uh, relief period, and a lot of them would not never come back. Mm. Which is understandable. The fucking crunch time they had to endure was... <sighs> it was evil. It was fucking evil. And to state that these crunch times is where the magic happens. Yes, I'm definitely referencing a fucking Jim Sterling video, but... It's fucking vile. Um, well... Do you actually know where that comes from? Where the magic happens? How, how you mean? Well, um, a lot of people have been taking it out of context. They've been saying that uh, the the term EA magic, like where the magic happens, yeah, uh, is to do with the fact that it's a crunch time in and of itself. But yeah. the idea was, and that statement more accurate, is that when you have a crunch time, it was that EA employees somehow made magic and then a good game would be made. And this was shown in uh, Battlefront 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think it happened for... Do you know? I don't know. I don't know specific examples of Battlefront 2. Oh yeah, there are, so, there are a handful of examples where Crunch Period offers a superior, if not a good gaming experience, but... I don't know about superior. Uh, well. It was it was a functional working game that people could play, mm. and even in the case of Battlefront Two, not always the case in terms of the netcode and stuff. But my question is: is so even if it does make a good superior product, is it worth the mental health of these people? No, it's not. Definitely but not. That's to say that they were taking glee out of the crunch times in and of itself. It was more, it was more of a, um, it, it was more of a pat on the back of the company. And to a realist who understood why it came about, it was more a pat on the back on a, a, a set of very hyper talented people who managed to whip everything together at the right time. Yeah. But unfortunately, who are not with the company anymore because of the aforementioned mental health issues that we talk about. They found better jobs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, that's the reason why Anthem is Anthem. Because those people aren't there anymore. They've slowly filtered away. And I expect that to happen. And I do not, I, I do not condemn anyone for letting that happen. You know, leaving it. I'd look after yourself. Yeah. Um. If a doctor tells you to go on a month-long break, probably look for a new job. <laughs> that you shouldn't ever be told that. <laughs> yeah. Um. What? Uh, do we have any more stories to cover, or are we? Skip yes, we do. Oh, we, we do. We, no, we have one more. We have more. Uh, yeah. So, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo are under investigation for consumer rights violations. You know, here, 
we here at the GGWP podcast uh, on my ranch, uh, we like to relax with a good old iced cup of uh, consumer rights. And when they violate those, i.e. piss in it, um, I get mad. So the Competition and Market Authority has launched a, or CMA for short, has launched an investigation into multiple business practices of Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. The CMA intends to examine whether the contract terms are fair, how easy it is to cancel uh, a pre-order or obtain a refund, and how the auto-renewal process is uh, regarding things like reminders and default settings, is likely in reference to um, subscriptions to their services. So yeah, this is Um, just, this is through, this is because of things like um, PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, and uh, Nintendo. Whatever they have. Yeah, whatever they have. Yeah. Um, Are they reminding you that you're still paying for them? Or are they banking on the fact that you're paying and then you forget about it? Yeah. Uh, That's interesting, that. How easy is it to get a refund if you never used it? Let's, for example, let's say uh, something that actually happened to me was... You're going to say Amazon. Amazon Prime, yeah? Yeah! Yeah, Amazon Prime. They charged me £40 for Amazon Prime. I didn't use it at all for anything. Yeah. And I couldn't afford it. So I wanted that money back. So I called up Amazon and I'm like, okay, we can see you haven't used any Prime service at all since you paid. We're going to refund you. Yeah. If you want to cancel it. That's good. That's good. That's consumer friendly. Will Sony, Nintendo, or Microsoft allow you to do that? Will Sony, Nintendo, or Microsoft allow you to refund a game if it doesn't work? You don't like it. It should be. A, I don't actually know if they do. Hmm. Oh, yawning. Um, actually, yeah. Just um, like, g- going back. Sorry, just going back to Amazon for a second. They're fucking. I knew you were gonna say Amazon. Like I knew you were gonna say. How did you know? Did I bring up the story before? No. I've had that experience on a handful of times. Oh. Like. And did are... you get the refund a handful of times? Yeah, yeah. I got the refund every time. Hmm. Like they are complete bastards for just taking your money and not saying a fucking thing. Like, yeah. one time, I'd even know they actually had given, like, taken the next subscription out. No e- Sorry. No email or anything. No e- yeah. And it's only when I went onto the website, and their fucking website needs updating. It's so fucking clunky. Mm. Um, I went onto there, and that's when I found out that they taken money from me. And So you called them? Yep, called them up, and they were like, yeah, you've done jack shit like, with this. Have your refund back. It's because every email or text message or whatever that you get saying you've paid X amount of money for our service is another email where you could potentially think, yeah, but I don't need it anymore. Or I don't really like it. You know? Yeah. So that's the unfriendly nature of it. Um... Currently, the CMA says that it has no view on whether the companies are in violation of consumer protection law. However, it, enforcement action will be taken if they find that the practices are misleading or unfair. And I don't think people have been really shouting about it being unfair or anything like that. What, have you have you heard any things about anything that? Those three companies I've been doing? Um, you know what? I just, they always give you emails. As far as I'm aware, my mum always paid for them. Um, mm. Well, X, this is Xbox. They've always given you emails. Um, you can always back out. I don't think Xbox is, and I don't think anyone's ever really complained about it. Mm. But, like, the baseline is you should get an email. Like, you should. If you don't, then... You know, this con, this you can just be gleefully taking this person's money, which is anti-consumer, very unlawful. Hmm. But yeah, I, I don't, 
I don't know. I, I didn't know this was still a thing in this day and age. Like, what well, consumer protection? Like, no, nah, I mean like issues about the actual subscription service. Like, we had a big issue back in the day when it was a, it was first coming out, but never had it before. Hmm. Like, I think we're all focused on microtransactions and loot boxes at the moment. I mean, that also might be unfriendly in terms of uh, consumer protection. It depends what they come up with and who they're looking at. What do you think? Microtransactions? It depends how they handle it. No, no, no. I mean, like, the subscription. What do you think of this whole investigation? Uh, I'd like to see what they come up with, but I don't subscribe to any of those services, so how would I? Do you know what I'm... Do you know what I am worried for? I'm worried for what? Nintendo. Why? They've only just recently gotten into this. Like, they're still very new at it, whereas Microsoft and PlayStation have had time to run, well, refine if they're, new. If they're found to be in violation, that just means they changed their server. It doesn't mean that they're not allowed to do it. I mean, they'll, um, they'll get fined for it, and poor Nintendo's just managed to get up. Bless them. After the fucking Wii U debacle. Mm. Uh, I, I kind of like obviously if they're in violation I want them to get pointed out you know you don't want them to just get away with it do you but yeah. um, I, I kind of don't I don't want to see Nintendo get uh, penalised for being new to it this is just poor timing I feel like for them Do you get what, I hope you get what I mean, anyway. I do get what I mean. Like, they're still developing it, they're still working on it. Like, they don't even have fucking voice chat functions. Although, I have re I did find out that games like Fortnite do give you in-game voice functions. But games like Smash Brothers don't, because obviously it's the first party thing. Mm. So, like, Fortnite allows you to use the headset on the Switch. Smash Bros makes you fucking use the mobile. See, the, o the the best way to fix that, and I'm going on a bit of a tangent, is to still have the app if you really want it, but have the app be able to connect to parties, like, again, Xbox parties, that's the one I best know, or connect to rooms or whatever the fuck they're called, if your Switch is docked across room. Don't fucking have an app and a phone. Like, it, it, I've, I did, I have realised what I just said, but shh, shh, I'm tired. <laughs> Next story? Nope, there's no other story. No other stories? Ooh. Um. Alright, my topic then. There we go. Transition. Um, so, I've been playing, uh, I played, as I mentioned earlier, I played, um, Far Cry 4 the other day. Right. And I remember something being on there. I remember the Uplay store. This is a store that if you get achievements, you get set points. The points can go toward buying things. And I just remembered how much of a thing that amazing thing that was for back then. And I always thought that people should incorporate it more. Because it's a U Ubisoft only thing. I think players should be rewarded in game um, for doing things in games that they've purchased that they can then spend on other other games. Like, if I was to get an achievement in Watch Dogs, I can spend that, the points that I get for that. Only certain achievements, not all of them, obviously. But, um,. <laughs> Well, you don't want to you don't want to fucking bustle them out of the market and whatnot, but like, they, no. you can um, you can spend like the achievement points you get from Watch Dogs on guns for Far Cry, and right. I think that's an amazing system. Like, it, admittedly, the content that you can get for it is some, most of the time like a single gun, a skin, a car, or and then a lot of the time it's just pictures, like avatar pictures, banners, uh, wallpapers, etc. Really useless shit. But like, what if you were to exp exp expand that to low tier DLC? Like, I'm not expecting to buy 
Um, you know, Liberty City stories with achievements you got from fucking Fortnite. Well, maybe so. Well, maybe so. Yeah, using that, the same yeah, kind yeah. of system. Yeah, like you could buy it with actual money and build it up. Like you can build your achievements. Little Timmy can't afford. Can't afford. Um, you know, it would it would bring back the the cheerful glee of a kid who saved up his paper round money to go and buy that baseball bat he wanted. Mm. And I, I don't go into the bit of the American dream over here, but it would. Yeah, you know, little Timmy can't afford the, the new expansion. Why don't he, you know, a service like Steam or Xbox, like a whole console wide, like if it is connected, like certain achievements give you points. You play games, you get points, you get. That would actually encourage people to buy cheap games, wouldn't it? To get. Yeah, yeah, it would actually. I think that is a very. That's a nice thing to do, personally. Little Timmy wants to spend his. Uh, like his achievement points on stop bringing up little Timmy yeah little Timmy's there he's... Timmy. if we keep bringing, making note of little Timmy then Randy Pitchford can't walk off with him can't walk walk off with him <laughs> to his little van gotta keep him in that ice yeah of course back off Randy it probably doesn't help that his name's Randy that's not mine not mine. <laughs> it was One a magic USB trick. USB memory stick assigned to Randy Pitchford. That's not mine. I'm telling you, CP is in my bag. <laughs> um, <laughs> an order for CP by one Randy Pitchford. <laughs> I'm telling you, this isn't me, but. A book saying CP is totally my bag by Randy Pitchford. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, he was. <laughs> anyway. Oh boy, Jesus. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, so little, little Timmy there can spend his fucking achievements that he got from fucking Metal Gear on. A loot box for fucking Fortnite, okay? I don't think Fortnite has loot boxes, but you get my point. A system like that would be a lot, a lot more consumer friendly. It would, it would make people strive to play games more and play them how they should be played. Like, you're meant you. To, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Like, you're meant to, you're meant to explore the games. You're meant to get the achievements. You're meant to look out for them. And I think that would be, I don't know. You get what I'm saying, don't you? I'm just rambling yeah. on. Yeah, I do. I think this is a system that could yes, be... Yes, yes, you are, but yes. It's a yeah. system that could be implemented by a console holder rather than mm -hmm. a, a, a single publisher. So that can be expanded to Steam and it can expand over their games like Half-Life. I mean, technically Valve has something like that. You can sell... Like... I was thinking you can sell... Your, your games, you, uh, guns you get in TF2 to buy cosmetics for CSGO. Mm. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's similar. Yeah. I just thought it was a nice thing anyway. Just something for the video games company to think about. Yeah. More we... stuff, they will. Let's move on to the next. <laughs> next and last topic, isn't it? Yeah. We've really cut down our topics, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. It's concise. It's better. I didn't want to bring some back at some point, but uh, that, that's for later. That's for later. Okay. So, welcome to... Games We'd Like to See. This is a segment games where we like basically... Games, games We'd Like to See. see. <laughs> basically, this segment... you can go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> this segment is... Um, we basically throw a load of um, ideas... <laughs> using one phrase or word. So, first person shooter counts, but a game where you shoot people in first person will not count, it's a sentence. And then once we've got a solid basis, we'll start uh, driving it off into its own content. I don't know why I explain this every week, but I like doing it. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's a formality. Yeah. I like it. It's a, it helps people understand. Yeah. Segment, so it's good. So, one Andy, one. who should go first? Uh, my turn this time, I always say. Yep. 
Uh, so I would like to start with uh, ooh, African American main character. Ooh. Need more of those in my honest opinion. Um, uh, are you are you gonna do um, a uh, appeal? Appeal. Uh, yeah, um, the guy who directed um, Get Out and uh, Us. Uh, I haven't seen. Um, no, no. Do you remember Key and Peel? I just think that black character. Yeah, I know. Um, he's I now just a director. Think that black characters. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm I've seen. Do you, do you get, get out? Do you get the reference. Do you get the reference. To what you just said, or to. To fucking to what get I out. Said. To what I said. The fucking fact that he's a director? No. No, I don't right. get the reference. Basically, people took out of context um, him saying, I wouldn't cast a white person as a main. Right. And then completely cut out the rest of the quote. The rest of the quote was, I've seen that move movie. I want a different movie. Hmm. Basically, he was making a valid point of there's too many white people in white roles. But a lot of people took that and went, he's being racist. It's reverse racism. Like, no. No. He's perfectly in his right to cast a black character if he's sick of seeing white characters as a main and character. There's one. something to be said of this is the reason partly why I hate token black characters. Yeah. And stuff. I'm not going to say that black people have a fundamentally different experience, but there are some things like putting ebonics on a character just because you're a, you just think black people will talk the same or something. And, like, fucking, if you're white, maybe you might not know how to write this character as well as you could. And I'm not saying stay to your lane, I'm saying try, please. Right, right. We'll, we'll and, if, and if he doesn't want to try, and if he wants to that's probably... You, you, you started cutting out again, man. Bleh! I said bleh. Fair enough. Um... So, right, so we've got an African-American lead character. Um, let's go for a theme. Let's go for a theme, 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 theme. Steampunk. Let's go steampunk. Yeah. Um, can I say more than a word at this point? Um, or shall we um, leave it for a bit longer? A bit longer. So, uh, stick to words and phrases. So, okay. yeah. Drugs. Drugs. Oh, is that a, is that a, um, a campaign theme or a? It's a superpower. It's a superpower, so you can take drugs to enhance your abilities. Yes, I'm that... glad you inferred that to what to what I was going. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I'm glad you inferred as to what I was getting at. I, I thought I'd ask, like, you know, you, there could be a storyline like Judge Dredd where it's, like, against the drugs, or you can have drugs to enhance your character, like uh, seen in the Cyberpunk trailer. Mm. So, uh, I'm going to put enhancements. Enhancements, here we go. Um, enhancements. Yep, I spelled enhancements horribly wrong. Um, en enhancements. I'm terrible at spelling, okay. Um, Don't worry about it. What else can we have? Um... So we've got drugs, we've got... Hmm. I feel this is your idea, so I'm going to leave the big big ones to you. So uh, I'm just going to say first person. Um, Guns. So uh, first person shooter? Yeah, sure. First person shooter. Um, do you, So guns, you want guns? Mm. Guns. Uh... Where do you think this place should be set, man? Uh, London. London. Be. Steampunk? Set it in. Yeah. yeah, London, steampunk, that makes sense, yeah. Um, hmm. So we've got drugs, we've got enhancements. Do you know what? I'm going to go with augmentations. A... Hey. Uh, what about you, man? Uh, leveling. Not oh. necessarily an RPG, just 
It's, it's got light RPG mechanics, a leveling system. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, system. Uh, so we're gonna have to come up with a story now. Like, uh, what what could the quest be for? Mm, I mean, steampunk. Ah, uh, no, that's cyberpunk. I'm, uh... You, you you're right there. I'm just trying to think of what. Um, leveling. So let's let's we got so we got an African American or African British in this instance. I'll put British. Uh, so an African British main character, steampunk with drugs uses enhancements, a first person shooter, uh, with guns, London augmentations, a leveling system. So let's um so let's think of like a story or. Maybe flesh out the character a bit. So um, we've got male, oh, female uh, backstory. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I, I, I was trying to say that steampunk is all about, like... Do you know? I don't know. I'm not too familiar with steampunk. Because I was thinking of cyberpunk when it's like, oh, find out government conspiracy and corruption and the Illuminati and stuff. Yeah. But it's not steampunk. So I don't know. Um, well, I'm going to put, um, right, gender selects. Uh, do you mind if I take the next one? Uh, sure thing. So, I think this is going to be like a story of a uh, man who owned a business mm -hmm. and has lost it in um, a vicious sort of business overtaking. So, uh, they blow up his base sort of thing, his factories, whatnot. And yeah. he's, he's, re, he's trying to get take revenge, and basically he's in the the power industry. So he has power a lot industry? of steam. Yeah, like oh, he, yes. he provides electricity. Well, not electricity, I, but... I thought by that you meant, like, the power industry. No, no, no. He's in, an, an industry with power. See, I can't quite say electric, because steampunk, like, the whole premise is, is, like, they didn't invent electricity and said everything's powered by steam. Yeah. Oh. Except when they do Tesla is because of steam. Exactly. Not make it desert punk's pretty. Uh, no, uh, it's called diesel punk. Diesel punk's pretty. I do have a I do have an idea actually. Yeah. So the story follows him creating, like starting to bring electric into the main main stay. Mm -hmm. Threatened, a rival company destroys them because then they have a stronghold over steam. Because if electric comes in, then they will go abs obsolete. Hmm. Bit like how they legalized weed because hemp industry was a lot more efficient than uh, a lot cheaper than the paper. Wait, what? Um, hemp hemp was cheaper to make than paper uh, than trees were to make paper. Something like oh. that. That's why. They, that's one of the main reasons why they keep weed illegal. I see. Something to that effect. I've probably got that horribly wrong. You know what? Don't don't take that from me. Just ignore me. Uh, but yeah. So story. So uh, I'm gonna put insert character. So insert character. Is on the brink of making um, of making electrical power a main stay in the av average person's life. Turned by this. Rival companies um, destroy destroy his slash hers factories factories to maintain a stronghold. Oh. 
What do you think? Sounds good. Anything else you want to add to this? So we got. Hmm. Oh, PlayStation Four only. PS Four only. No, it's an Epic Store exclusive, man. Oh yeah, true. Of course, for six months, and then then it can go over the fuck we want it. What a fucking day. Um. So yeah, anything you want to add to the idea, like as a game? Um. Boxes? No. Uh, you say foxes. No, I can't. I said loot boxes, but foxes could be companion animal. We could. Oh yeah, animal companion. So uh, he's very much against the Tories. Um, against the Tories. Yeah, because Tories allow box on him. Oh. Something. Yeah. Tories. Um, there was a bill. Made, uh, backed mostly by the Tories that wanted to reinstate Fox on in. How can you do that? Well, they, they put a bill through Parliament and go, yeah, you can shoot foxes now. Enjoy. There ain't no guns to do that. They just say Fox on in. They never said what you can do. You can use a fucking crossbow if you wanted. Animal Companion? Yes, you actually can. Box. Um, I suppose they're legal. They are very legal yeah, here, aren't they? Consistent. Um, you know what? I'm going to put this over here. I know this is like completely ineffective, but let's do this. Like this. There we go. And we'll put over the screen cap picture. There we go. Does just mind just mind the bright and colourful colours, okay? Mm. Mm. Now everyone can read my terrible spelling. Um So what else would you want to add to this? Nothing. It's Nothing? Perfect. It's perfect. Perfect. It's perfecto. 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 Molto bene. Oh, we have to do one one more thing though, man. What's that? We have to name it. Uh, main character's name is Gilligan. Call it Gilligan's Adventure. Boom. I'm the best at this. That doesn't sound generic in the slightest. Isn't that already a game? <laughs> I can hear you typing. <laughs> yeah, that's a fucking game. <laughs> It's a board game. Fucking. Alright, so we, we got a Steve. Uh, we got. Ah! That uh, is Gilligan's Island. And then there was a TV show called The Adventures of Gilligan's. Take me. How about no? It's not the same. It's legally distinct. But they're not really having a venture. They're taking revenge. I swear to God, if you say Gilligan's Revenge. No. The Revengers of Gilligan. <laughs> the Revengers? <laughs> Metal Gear Gilligan. <laughs> Metal Gear. Revenge. Revengers. <laughs> um. I'm the best. Oh, dear. Um, how, yeah. about, how about... How uh... about... Shit, I can't really think of a name for this. Think of an old timey British word. Gavna. Gavna. Working time, um, we're just, we're just going to call it Governor with all the typing errors. Yeah. G U V N A. Gavna. Here we go. Gavna. Here we go. Alright, uh, Governor. Alright, uh, Governor. Uh, <laughs> fucking hate us. We're the best podcast. <laughs> Everything I do just makes me want to die. Yeah. It's a good <laughs> 
Yes, sir. Any Koopa. Games would like to see. That games we definitely would like to see. Uh, that was a good game we made. Yeah. I love how we're just both really bad at making games. No, no, I think we're very good. I think we did it. We did it. Da, 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 da. So, we've made a uh, governor. 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 Gov. Oh my god, we got Chaos Dunk Simulator. Forgot about Chaos Dunk Chef Kazumi Deluxe Rising Superstar Mega Remix. Oh yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, the ability to spit in food. Oh, Rims of Fire, my personal favourite. Rise of Caesar, another favourite of mine. Oh, then there's Temporal God Killer. You have some good ideas. And all of them should be shot down by someone else, honestly. We're just terrible. You're just wrong, okay? I am just wrong. Great! They won! What did I win? Should we should we end the podcast, man? Yeah, I think we should end the podcast. We're just going nowhere we're now, just, aren't we? We're just fucking riffing off terrible jokes yeah. and references to fucking uh fucking Link and the five Djiboutis or some shit. I think we're very tired. Uh, we are very tired. Time. Also, um, can we just appreciate that um, Streamlabs didn't pick up on the fact that uh, Jared subscribed? Oh, amazing. But, um, Isn't that great? It is great. It's <coughs> unfortunate he didn't pick up on it. So, Jared, thank you for resubscribing. Um, for anyone who's watching, and I can see my view counter, it's at a solid zero right here. Um, oh, before we riff off the final part. Yeah. Are we actually going to acknowledge um, oh, uh, fucking... yeah, I just had a don't worry about it. Again. Oh, you mean a perfectly normal podcast last week? Yeah. Yeah, it's perfectly normal. Yeah, I don't even know why I brought it up. Yeah. Really. It's, it's standard. Real standard. Real standard. Standard as it could be. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Dun, 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 I like that. <laughs> that was a funny meme. Feels Join the disc meme. discords if you feel so inclined. Uh, biggest Rini on uh, Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok. Demon It'll leads... blow your mind. Demon Leads 926. It's the way. Don't subscribe to him unless you're gay. I am gay. Uh, Good game well played at uh, gmail.com. It's not the actual thing, but you can see it on the thing. And um, I'm writing because it's GGWP time. I've got to play some Minecraft and hang out in the mine. I have no life. I have no girl. I might give wanking a little bit of a whirl. I hate my life because my sorrow gets bigger. That's because Jesus Christ is my nigger. Bye. <laughs> you going to say bye, man? No. Okay. I don't deserve to. <laughs> all right. Goodbye from us all. Thank you for goodbye. enjoying us as, our, as we slowly hit our midlife crisis. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>